All right, everyone, it is 930, so we are going to go ahead and get started. Um, thank you for joining us for our How to Bring Gen Z into Your Small Business. Um, this is a webinar that's being put on today by Newtown Macon. My name is Emily Hopkins, and I am the Vice President of External Affairs here at Newtown Macon. I have lived in Macon for 10 years and have worked in community development that entire time. I absolutely love this community, and I think our small businesses are one of the reasons why it's so special and so exciting to be a part of everything that's happening in Macon right now. Um, I also want to admit that I am a millennial, so I am not part of Gen Z, and that's definitely going to influence uh, my perspective today and the information that's going to be shared. So I want to be fully transparent about that as we dive into this information. Um, joining me today is Caitlin Cresson. She is the owner of Fall Line Brewing Company and Just Tapped. Caitlin is an incredible community advocate for Macon and a wonderful business owner and entrepreneur. And she does some really exciting and innovative things um, in her businesses to attract people downtown and to support her small businesses. And the, the thing that I love about Caitlin is that she works to build the community she wants to live in through her role as a business owner. So she's going to be sharing some strategies and things that she does within her own businesses to attract Gen Z um, and the ways that you can um, implement those yourselves and as well as some lessons that she's learned over the years. So before we dive into um, the bulk of our content for this webinar, it's important to know who we are at Newtown Macon and why we're providing this information to you today. So our our mission is to invest time, resources, and money in local people and businesses to revitalize downtown Macon. Um, and we fulfill that mission and realize our vision of a city led by locals that's booming and real in a multiple different ways. Um, one way is through real estate development. So we purchase properties ourselves downtown and we fix up their buildings and return them to their highest and best use. We also help our local real estate developers and make in do that same work um, in the downtown area. We increase the number of residents by focusing on building loft housing and adding more housing to our downtown area. Um, we also work to improve the overall quality of life in Macon by building the Amalki Heritage Trail and creating those opportunities for connection um, and recreation. We also contribute to the overall experience of downtown Macon by investing in our public spaces, making our downtown really beautiful and clean, um, and doing events that bring new audiences to downtown. And then we also support our local entrepreneurs, which is why we're all here today. Um, we do things like trainings like this um, that are one-off webinars or marketing trainings. We also offer several signature academies like our Developers Academy, our Entrepreneurs Academy, and the Downtown Diversity Initiative. And we also have a really robust loan program because we're a community development financial institution, which means we're a nonprofit that can lend to um, real estate projects as well as small businesses. So if you're a small business owner, Owner and after this webinar, you need a microloan to build out your website, or you want to expand your existing business, or you're looking to start up a new business, we'd love to talk to you and see what those options are and um, get to know you better. So um, that's Newtown making in a nutshell. And one of the reasons why we're offering this webinar um, to think about new audiences that you can attract into your small business to make your business stronger. So today we're going to be covering a lot of information, um, and I think it's important that you know where we got this information, um, and that is not just stuff that we made up or decided based on observation. So we did a lot of online research, um, and we'll share our references at the end of this presentation, and they'll also be in the description of this video so you can see exactly where we're pulling um, some of the statistics and general trends that we're going to talk about today. And then we also conducted a small focus group of, um, of Macon Gen Zers. Uh, this was comprised of some Mercer University students as well as a couple of working professionals who are already out and working in their um, jobs and 
have a little bit of a different perspective. And then Caitlin, of course, will be sharing some tested business practices that she has used in her own business and um, some of the things that have worked. So as a small business owner, why should you care about Gen Z? Well, first and foremost, they have $360 billion of disposable income. Um, and this number is only going to grow in the years to come. Gen Z is about a fifth of the U.S. population. Um, there are currently 65 million um, people of the gen Generation Z. And um, that accounts for about 20% of the United States population, and they're the third biggest generational group. Um, Gen Z was born between 1997 and 2012, so that means their ages are from 12 to 27. So this is a group of people that um, is comprised of preteens and teenagers, so they may still, they're still living in their homes with their parents, but they're definitely influencing um, families' shopping habits and spending habits. Um, it's also composed of college students who are out on their own for the first time, as well as young professionals who are entering the workforce and are um, starting their first jobs and have been working for a little while. Um, this generation is also the most ethnically and racially diverse generation in our nation's history. Um, and what I mean when I say that is that about half of this generation, 48%, um, comes from communities of color. And there are more Hispanic and Asian um, people in this generation than any generation prior in the United States history. And this is also a generation of digital natives. So Gen Zers have lived with the internet pretty much their entire lives. Um, so they are much more discerning and thinking about um, and using using the internet much more um, than you would see than generations prior and using it in a different way, which definitely affects their spending and shopping habits. Um, this is a generation that's grown up in an area era that's been defined by crisis, major technological innovation, arguably some of the most advances in technology um, in our world's history, and social change. Um, this is a generation that doesn't remember the peace and the prosperity of the 90s the way that we as millennials do, and they've lived in a world that's mostly, uh, that's been uh, past 9-11. Um, things like the um, iPhone hit the market and Netflix started streaming in 2007, um, which was pretty early for most of the people living in Generation Z. Um, they've experienced incredible social change with our first Black president being elected um, in 2008 with President Barack Obama, and also have experienced the polarization of our national politics over the course of over the past several years. And of course, COVID has been a defining moment for this generation with many of them being in school during the era of COVID and dealing with e-learning, but also the social change and the social movements that came with that era with Black Lives Matter. So um, that's a big, big basic sweeping overview of Generation Z. But what's important is how do you use that information to actually reach Gen Z? First and foremost, you need to be authentic as a business owner. This is a generation that has grown up online and has lived with social media for most of their lives. Um, and they are really good at spotting when things are fake or when they're not real. Um, according to a um, survey conducted by Ernest & Young, 92% of Gen Z respondents indicated that being authentic or, and true to oneself is extremely important. And they expect the same of you as a business owner. So what that means is that you need to show out how you live out your business values and your personal values in your business practices. And you need to share that information online. Um, and one of the best ways to do this, I think, is sharing your business story, talking about why you went into business and um, why that influences the decisions and the products you carry or the services or the services that you offer um, day in and day out. 
if you are in downtown and you're familiar with Scott Mitchell, I think he does an incredible job of this. He's the owner of the Bohemian Den and Sweet Eleanor's. Um, Scott has a really compelling story that's full of obstacles and challenges that he's overcome. And an, he's very clear and explicit about how those things um, influence the way that he does business today and what led him to open the businesses that he has with the Bohemian Den and Sweet Eleanor's. Um, and he does a great job of telling that story, both in person, but he also shares that story regularly online. And you can see how his business values are carried out in every th single thing that he does. Um, so really think about that. If you've never had it, the if you've never sat down and defined your business values or written out your business story, this is a great time and a great opportunity to write that out and think about it and then think about how you can share that information. Um, and I also want to um, say that you don't have to have a story that is full of challenges and obstacles for it to be compelling. If you love downtown Macon or you love Macon and you decided to invest um, in this community because of your love for it and you wanted to get back, that's a good story. Tell that, but always be authentic and real when you do it, because this is a generation that's going to see through anything that's fake. Um, this is also really important if you choose to support causes um, or social causes in your business, whether that's doing a profit share or donating a portion of proceeds um, to a cause you need to show why you're doing that. Be sure to be very explicit about why that matters to you and your business and why you're you're making that decision as a business owner to donate um, donate or carry certain products that also um, give back to the to a cause. Um, because this is a generation that's going to notice anything that seems like it's a cash grab or it's pandering, or that you're trying to capitalize on a movement or a social cause. So um, be clear and explicit about why you're supporting anything like that. Um, when it comes to actually communicating with this generation and doing your digital marketing, Instagram is where you need to be. And I hope that I can give all of you a little bit of relief when I say that your business does not have to be on TikTok to reach Gen Z. You just don't have to be there, but you do need to be on Instagram because 75% of Gen Z is using Instagram, which is only second to YouTube. And I think what's really important when you look at this graph and you see um, the popularity of different social media platforms for Gen Z, Yes, Instagram is second, but YouTube is first and TikTok is third, which means that the content that you're sharing on Instagram matters and how you package that. So video is still important, but you don't have to be on a full-fledged video platform to be able to reach Gen Z. You can incorporate reels and different elements like that into your um Instagram marketing or in social media marketing and still be just as effective. So um, don't go out and start a new platform like TikTok because you need to, because I know that video is very labor intensive and it's hard to um, consistently keep that up sometimes. But just know that if you're on Instagram and that you're being consistent with your presence and your message, that that will work just as well. Um, and 35 percent are of Gen Zers spend four or more hours on social media every day. So if you're not using um, Instagram or any other social media, now's the time to start because this is where you are going to be reaching this audience and truthfully everyone everywhere. Um, and it's really important to remember that traditional marketing rule of seven, that a customer has to see your message seven times before they're going to answer that call to action. So you need to be thinking about that as you're posting on Instagram and sharing things, especially for any product or service or promotion that you're running that is time bound. So for example, if you have a book signing or a wine tasting coming up, or you're running some kind of discount promotion um, or program that has a deadline, 
you need to be sure that you're allowing yourself enough time on Instagram to share that information so that people see it um, seven times and that you're not just posting about it um, for a whole week and um, hoping that people see it. Allow yourself the time to do that effectively and well. Um, and when it comes to being online, this is really influences um, Gen Z shopping habits. So 41% of Gen Zers say that they gather ideas for what they're going to purchase by browsing online. And this is according to a wholesale retailer called FAIR um, in a survey that they did. Um, so even if Gen Z is not going to make their final purchase online, they may still come in store to make it. They're going to do some research ahead of time before they ever step into your business or visit your um, business website to hit that purchase button. So it's really important that you are building an online experience that is really easy to use and very easy to navigate um, for Gen Z to be able to research and see what you have to offer. So some ideas for this is be sure that you're posting your best sellers on your Instagram feed and on your website. If you have been thinking about um, doing an online store or something of that nature, this is a good opportunity to show that this will work and will probably have a good ROI if you have the ability to manage that. But if you don't, that's okay. You can still post um, your best selling items online, make sure that those are very accessible. It's very easy to know what those are, have beautiful photos, know the price um, so that Gen Z can find that as they're making those um, decision making processes. Um, also related to that, if you're a restaurant or a bar, be sure that your menus are easy to find and updated. This is something that is going to be reviewed before making a decision to step into your restaurant. Um, and from, as we'll get into later, Gen Z is very social. And when they go into um, brick and mortar businesses, they're going to be visiting with friends. So you want to be sure your menu is up to date so that everybody can look and see and be sure that they're going to be able to find something that they all like and enjoy. Um, and at the barest, barest minimum, you need to be sure that your business information is accurate and easy to find and up to date across any platform that you're using and anywhere your business name appears online. Um, from our focus group, one of um, one of them said, your business seems unreliable if you don't have your information online and correct, which means they don't trust you and they're probably not going to visit your business. And you don't want to miss out on that potential business just because your hours are not updated or your website um, doesn't reflect what you're currently offering. And related to this and the time that Gen Z spends online researching before they make purchasing decisions or making a decision to step inside your business, they're looking at review sites. So they're looking at your Google profile, Yelp and TripAdvisor to see what other people are saying about your business. This quote really resonated with me. Real people take real photos because it's so true. I mean, this was kind of like a dumb moment, but you're going to go to see what other people are saying about a business and see what their experience is rather than relying just on what a business is showing. Because of course you as a business owner are going to be posting beautiful photos and showing the best of your business. But what people um, who go to visit or posting gives you a really good idea of what you can experience. Um, all of these photos on this slide were taken from Piedmont Brewery and Kitchen's Google profile page, and they were all posted by different users. And you can see from this that this gives you a pretty good idea of what your experience is going to be like when you walk into Piedmont, um, even though this isn't curated content by the business owner. And you may be thinking, well, I can't control what my customers post on my Google profile, but you can control the experience and the consistency of your product and the overall atmosphere. So think about that. That's very important as you um, as you're building out your business and thinking about the content that people are posting and sharing about you online. And if any of this seems incredibly overwhelming and you just don't know where to start, we have an upcoming training program at Newtown Macon. Um, 
to help get your business online. So this is going to be the most basic of the basic. If you don't know how to claim your Google profile page, you're not sure how to update your about information on your Facebook page or your Instagram bio, um, we are going to go over that and help you walk away with those things updated and with the tools to be able to do that. So be sure to follow follow Newtown on Instagram and Facebook for more information about that or visit our website at newtownmakin.com. Um, next, quality and value really matter to Gen Z. Um, and when we talk about quality and value, this is a generation that's very, very mindful of how they're spending their dollars. On average, um, Gen Z saves about a third of their income. So this is a generation that's thinking about the future, thinking about where they're spending their dollars and what value they're going to get from every dollar they spend. And that's really important when you think about the quality and how you're promoting the quality and value of your products. So they're not interested in something that's going to end up in the landfill or they're not going to be able to use in a couple of months. They want to invest in a, in a product as a rule. Um, and they're willing to pay a little bit more for that quality and value. So that's a really, really good news for you as a business owner. But you have to be sure that you're demonstrating that quality and value on your online presence to be sure that when they're doing their research, they know that that's something um, they can expect and rely rely on. Um, I think Macon Bagels does a really good job of this. Um, this is a description of their veggie cream cheese, um, which sure, they could have just said, we have a new veggie cream cheese, but instead they really took you on a journey when they wrote this description and they told you where they're getting this um, where they're getting the ingredients from. They're supporting a local farm and they're supporting our local farmer's market to be able to develop this um, veggie cream cheese and serve it to you. So if you're a restaurant or a bar, really think about how you're talking about the ingredients that go into your products. Um, and that's the same for retail or any service. Think about those personalized touch or the value that you can show um, for any kind of product or service that you're offering. Um, and customer service really matters to this generation as well. 54% um, of Gen Zers said that they stopped buying from a company due to poor customer service. This is more so than millennials, than Gen X, and boomers. To put it in perspective, 38% um, of boomers left a company due to court for customer service. So customer service really, really matters to this generation. And that doesn't mean that um, you have to do all these elaborate things. It really just means being sure that your staff is trained well, that they're friendly, but they're not overbearing or pushy. Um, being really mindful of how you interact with Gen Z, don't don't treat them differently because they look young. Um, and if you do have some kind of complaint or issue come up, be sure that you're resolving that quickly. And if it's not something that can immediately be resolved, be sure that you're being transparent about the process. Um, but I really want to emphasize this point because this came up a lot in the focus group conversation that we had, that customer service was very, very important um, to Gen Zers and how they interact with businesses and whether or not they're going to go and visit a business more than once and become a loyal customer. Um, and something that's really important to know and a really important to know is that brick and mortar is not dead for this generation or dead period. 47% um, of Gen Zers for sure to prefer to shop in store rather than online. And that's more so than any demographic. But of course, how they're shopping in person is a little bit different than in the past. Online shopping to Gen Z very much seems like a to-do list item. It's where they're doing buying their groceries and doing a Walmart pickup order or buying necessary items that they need. Versus in-person shopping is much more of an experience and a social ad outing. It's something that they do that's meant to be enjoyable and a source of fun. 
Um, and so I think for business owners, um, especially if you do have a brick and mortar um, business, it's really important to create an experience. So think about the entire atmosphere of your business. If you have a way to put up a photo wall, be sure that you do that. Um, Vibes in downtown Macon does a great job of this. They change their photo wall out regularly, um, but you can always tell and know instantly that, that that any picture that's being posted with that in the background is from Vibes. Um, Serenity does a great job of this as well. Um, and it also creates a great background for any kind of product pictures you need to take to put on your Instagram or um, on your website. Um, related to this, um, sensory experience is also very important. This didn't come up as much in online research, but in the focus group conversation that we had, this was emphasized a lot. And what I mean when I say sensory experience is um, the overall experience of the volume of your music, the temperature of um, your business, uh, the comfort of your chairs, all those things. Um, you know, those are things that I think we sometimes become numb to or don't notice as much as business owners or employees because we're in that place of business day in and day out. Um, but that is really important to the overall atmosphere and experience of going into a place. So if you haven't um, thought about that in a while, this would be a good opportunity to invite some friends or invite some loyal customers who, you know, would give you some honest feedback just to do an audit of what is the overall experience and vibe of your business and what are some areas and room, um, room for improvement. And then finally, word of mouth still works for Gen Z. Word of mouth is going to work for anyone, anywhere, any point in time, because we care about what our friends and our peers say. But for Generation Z, this still works and is still incredibly important because like we talked about social experience or the social experience is very important. So you want to hear from your friend or your peer that a place is really cool and you enjoyed going there. Um, and that's what's going to attract more people into your business. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Caitlin Cresson, and she is going to share some examples from her business of ways that she has been able to reach out and market to Gen Z. Hi, everyone. Good morning, and thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Emily and Newtown, for inviting me to be a part of this conversation. Um, I had way too much fun researching all of this information and thinking about my businesses under a fine tune comb and uh, making sure that we were doing everything that we could to bring Gen Z into our businesses. So um, like Emily mentioned, uh, I own uh, Just Tapped and Falling Brewing Company and I too am a millennial. Um, I also am upset that skinny jeans and side parts got taken away from us. Uh, so I am not, uh, <laughs> uh, I am resistant to change as much as anyone else, but we, uh, understand why it's important and how it makes the world go around. So, um, one of the things that we really focus on at fall line, that's very important to us is, uh, the experience. So the experience that we have at Fall Line and that we create comes through in a lot of ways through events. We have found that, um, you know, we have this really great outdoor space and people more often than posting pictures inside of our tap room when they review our business, post pictures in that space. So how can we capitalize on that? If that's a space that we know that people love, then let's put people in that space more often. So that led us to yoga. And we've had lots of different yoga events out there and we theme them differently to create a new experience every time. And oftentimes we do it based on pop culture events, things that um, are popular with certain generations. And uh, two of them that I have here are obviously Taylor Swift and Barbie. They both took over the world in 2023, and uh, we wanted to capitalize on that. So we had both of those yoga events, and they were wildly successful, and lots of people came out. And it was really as simple as playing Taylor Swift music in the background, giving cat ears to everyone that showed up. Um, and that turned into at least a 7 to $15 sale per person once they got in our store. Um, as well as Barbie yoga, we just encouraged everyone to wear pink, 
we um, put up a photo backdrop that was made of all pink banners. Um, and again, that turns into a seven to $15 sale per person once they're in our doors. Um, something else that uh, was mentioned in the focus group that Emily was talking about was thrifting and how the idea of thrifting is something that's really important to Gen Z and um, not, um, I guess, supporting fast fashion as often and really looking for curated pieces that are high quality and something that they're going to enjoy and keep in their wardrobe for a really long time. So we kind of took that idea and ran with it and created a clothing exchange event at Fall Line where we invited people to bring in pieces that maybe didn't fit them anymore or weren't um, their style anymore, turn them in. We kept them, organized them by um, size and style and things like that, and then invited people to come out and exchange their tickets that they got for turning in their clothes for new clothes. Um, so it was kind of a thrifting event. We did an upcycling workshop by partnering with Frankie's Boutique and it went really well. We had tons of people come out for that, um, experience. It was a day where they could spend time with their friends and go shopping. Um, but again, it turned into a seven to $15 sale per person as they came out and purchased a beer or grabbed lunch and sat in the garden and enjoyed themselves. Um, we can go to the next slide, Emily. Another experience that we created that I hear about a lot and one that I think is really easily um, replicated is our anniversary party. Um, you know, I think it's important when you're hosting events and creating these experiences that you don't overdo them, meaning don't hold them too often. Um, they can start to get a little lost and they can start to get a little repetitive feeling if they're not different enough and um, separated enough by time and um, just the overall experience of the event. But for our anniversary party, something that I want to put out that I felt like my team did a really great job of was really explaining to the customer on our social media exactly what they could expect at our third anniversary celebration. So if I had just said Fall Line Brewing Company's third anniversary celebration, you would have thought, okay, that sounds like a fun event. They're going to be celebrating their anniversary, but why should I go? Um, so on our Instagram, if you were to toggle over from this middle photo to this photo on the right, you would see a list of the weekend's events, why you should attend, what exactly the customer can expect. And so that messaging is really clear in making sure that everyone wants to, um, you know, reads through it, knows what to expect, and then they can kind of pick and choose. Do they want to come for all three days of the anniversary celebration or just one? Um, and make sure that it's something that, you know, that they feel comfortable with before they come out. As Emily said, it's something that Gen Z is inherently good at uh, reading between the lines in your social media and making sure that it's something that they feel comfortable with. Um, we, you know, in addition to the experiences that we set, we, often throw out specials and um, in the food and beverage industry, that's a lot easier uh, to do than it is in the retail industry sometimes um, because you have just endless opportunities with different foods and drinks and cocktails that you can create. Um, but at the end of the day, what you're trying to do is kind of create this sense of urgency, this, um, you know, item that everybody wants. You're trying to balance, which can be a little difficult, how many of these specials you create um, versus how many you're going to sell. Um, but when you find that balance and you kind of know your customers well enough to know where you're going with that, you can create these specials and really capitalize on these fun short-term moments that aren't a ton of work, but in this instance, you know, we paired donuts with beer and it created these cute little flights that everybody wanted to get their hands on. It tasted good, but if it had not tasted good, I don't think it really would have mattered all that much. I think people would have been really into it because they could have bought it. They could have taken a picture of it. They would have enjoyed the experience of tasting those donuts and the beer together and um, shared that moment with their friends. Which, uh, you know, leads me into one of our next things, which is those shareable moments that uh, 
uh, Emily talked about. So we do these uh, specials at just tapped every month. We have a sangria of the month. And I would say 75% of the sales of that sangria of the month comes from the aesthetic of the special. People want to have something that is aesthetically pleasing and pretty because like uh, Emily said, Gen Z is um, inherently conscious of what is being fed to them on social media. And often they want to share those moments with their friends as well. So um, taking pictures of these specials and posting them online and uh, creating an experience through a special is something that is uh, fun to play around with. You get to share your creative side, um, but something that other people really get into and want to experience as well. So like I said, those shareable moments, um, vibes uh, that Emily mentioned downtown does such a good job of tr trading those um, backgrounds out and things like that. Um, we have found that markets at Fall Line have been going over really well. So we have markets about every other month now um, in our event space in the back and people really enjoy them. And part of the reason I think that we have started to see a younger crowd attend those events is that I make sure every time that the market is themed differently, so that it's not the same thing over and over again, it's not repetitive. This last one that we did was a Valentine's market Everyone, um, all of the vendors decorated their booths in Valentine's decorations. We decorated the space in Valentine's decorations. And when you walked in, it was very clear that there was a theme. Everything kind of flowed together. But we also had these shareable moments where people could buy cute drinks and share them on Instagram, or they could take a picture in front of our heart balloon wall and share them on Instagram. And those shareable moments, um, you know, really turn into what we talked about with the word of mouth. So um, they take those pictures, they share those pictures, and it just kind of creates a snowball effect to advertise your business. Um, the picture in the bottom right is a lavender haze sangria that we created at Just Tap to pair with Taylor Swift Yoga. So kind of creating those experiences that people wanna come out and attend the event and then pairing it with the uh, special that creates a sense of urgency. There were only, I think we made about 50 of them. Once they were gone, they were gone. Um, and people really got into it and loved the glittery purple drink. Uh, the top right picture is from New Year's Eve this past year, um, where downtown as a whole did a Beyonce Renaissance themed New Year's Eve. And so we got really into the disco balls and the silver um, glitter and uh, made sure that we created this um, sangria that came in a little disco ball cup so that people could take pictures with it and people loved it. It was cute. It was easy. It was fun. I ordered them from Amazon um, and it just added to the overall experience that people had. As Emily mentioned, um, you know, Gen Z is very aware and conscious of any causes that you choose to support, um, but they want to know why and they want to know what the what the point is and how it relates to your business. Um, so for us at Fall Line, we don't have a particular nonprofit that we work with on a consistent basis, but we have a Pouring with a Purpose program where we pick a nonprofit of the month, nonprofits of Nonprofits in Macon can apply to um, be a nonprofit of the month and work with us. And we put them on the calendar. And during that month, we share on our socials just a little bit about them um, because we understand that we have a pretty big social media following. And um, so us being able to help advertise their nonprofit can definitely be helpful towards them. Um, but then we also have a giving tap where we pick kind of a lower selling beer for the month and um, anyone who comes in and purchases that beer during that month, we donate a portion of the proceeds back to our nonprofit of the month. We also have profit share opportunities. Um, we have uh, team building night opportunities for that nonprofit of the month and 
it's just a program where we're able to um, partner with other local organizations to help advertise our business, but also um, kind of really package it all together nice and neat and make sure that that messaging is clear under our pouring with a purpose umbrella. Another fun event that we did, so this is kind of combining the um, need for a cause or a, um, a nonprofit for Gen Z while also combining the experience aspect of it um, was puppy love yoga. So we have a great yoga system, like I mentioned with homegrown yoga as a partner where they come out and provide free yoga for people in our garden. And then we wanted to create a cause. So um, Possum Southern Rescue is a great um, dog adoption center. And then we wanted to create an experience. So we paired those together and did dog yoga. And then after dog yoga, you could join us for the adoption fair and you could play with the dogs in our garden and really get to know them before hopefully taking one of them home. So we were able to raise money for Possum Southern Rescue. Um, I think nine dogs got adopted that day, which is a lot more than I thought would, um, which we were really proud of. But also at the end of the day, we made money in our tap room. People hung out there longer. They drank beer. They played with the puppies. They ate food. And they really had a good time. Uh, there were lots of pictures taken that day. Lots of things shared on social media. So it was a win-win for, for all three partners involved, for sure. And like I said, those pictures turn into what... It's funny that uh, Emily talked about word of mouth is is still alive. People do still come into your business based on word of mouth, but I think I uh, lean towards calling it more the digital world word of mouth. Um, so you know it is still word of mouth. It's just written on an online platform. Um, so. Google is probably where is where I go the most to search a business and make sure that it's somewhere that I want to spend my money and go and visit and be a part of. And so, like Emily said, those Google pictures that people see on there are so important. So we incentivize people at Fall Line to write reviews of Fall Line. And that can be something as simple as a QR code that says, you know, please share your experience online, or it could be a hey, share your experience online to be entered to win this gift bag, or it could be trading people um, a review online in exchange for a discount or something of that nature. So um, we really push heavily for these reviews and we're super grateful and just incredibly blown away about how many reviews that we've gotten. And I'm very... Um, excited that people continue to share pictures of our space because as Emily mentioned, it's so important when Gen Z is looking in these different um, reviews that they see real pictures taken by real people and they don't feel like it's just me, Caitlin Cresson, taking beautiful pictures of my space and telling people how great it is. It's other people enjoying the space and knowing that the experience is authentic and real and they really are going to have a good time when they go there. And as you notice, like I mentioned, most of these pictures are taken in our beer garden. People really love that space. So we try to capitalize on that as much as possible. Real people take real pictures. So if you're looking at these three photos, I think one of them stands out a little bit more um, than the other two. So it doesn't always have to be pictures of Gen Z. I don't think that I have to see only pictures of millennials in order to feel comfortable going into a space. But the point is that one of these pictures was taken by a customer and two others were taken by professional photographers. And if I see the two that are taken by professional photographers, they look fun, they look inviting, they look energetic, but they also look very staged. And that's okay. And that's good to share. And it makes for good marketing. And there are definitely places for that. But if I see that picture in the top right of three women enjoying a murder mystery dinner at Fall Line, they look like they're having a blast. They got really into the masquerade theme. You can see the people in the background talking, hanging out. You can see that they enjoyed their drinks because they're empty sitting on the table. Then that means that they had a good experience, they had a good time, and they felt so compelled by their good time to share that picture on social media um, and 
we in turn also shared that picture because we liked it a lot. <laughs> so I've talked a lot about fall line. Um, and I think that it would be silly of me to sit here and talk about what all the great things that we do um, to market to Gen Z and bring Gen Z into our business and not mention some of the ways that we could improve. Um, Just Tapped opened in 2014 and um, we've made minor improvements as we've been open. So it's been open for almost 10 years now um, and made small changes here and there. We do lots of fun uh, wine pairing events there. We do um, some workshops and sip and paint classes and partner with the 567. We have Oktoberfest there. We have our annual beer festival there. So we do lots of fun programming and experiences and events. But I think one of the um, things that I'd like to point out is that we have a lot of places to improve in terms of our messaging and our curb appeal. Um, we recently swapped out some of our, um, outdoor tables and chairs, but if you pay close attention and you really look closely at the windows, the windows on the outside of just tapped are a little messy. The wording is not super clear. The messaging, is this a growler spot? Is this a dog place? Is this a restaurant? I'm not really sure. Maybe I'm going to go inside to find out. Maybe I'm not. Maybe that messaging just turned me away and I'm going to go down the street and have dinner at Pearl instead. Um, once you get in Just Tapped, uh, I think something that Emily, that Emily mentioned is that Gen Z is um, really in touch with their feelings and their senses and um, the overall experience that they have at an establishment. And it's really important. And in doing that, I think one of the... Um, one of the people mentioned that an overstimulating environment can really lead to a kind of okay experience. Um, to me, the walls in Just Tapped with all of these old beer signs, it's a little overstimulating. Um, if you really look closely going back on the bar at Just Tapped, uh, this is an ever ending uh, battle with our team members is getting that area cleaned up because it is customer facing and it should be clean and nice and neat and not have extra stacks of to-go boxes and napkins and things of that nature. And small things like that that really set you apart um, to Gen Z, making sure that the environment is clean and welcoming, the atmosphere is good. Um, I think something that we uh, hear Gen Z say a lot is, uh, you know, the vibes of that place was good. If you're a millennial or uh, you remember the 90s, we used to say that place is the bomb. Um, same concept, uh, just two different ways of saying it. Um, but if you think about what they're trying to say when they say the vibes of that place are good, they're saying that it makes them feel good. When they go in that establishment, they feel welcome. They feel at home. They feel um, happy. They're enjoying themselves. And that is a, one of the best compliments that someone can give you as a business owner. Um, we have some room for improvement, like I mentioned, but something that we do really well is uh, the consistency it just tapped. So we always have that sangria of the month and that goes really well and people really enjoy it. But we also have a pizza of the month that we turn over and um, you know it is usually either a pop culture reference. Uh, this month is called the Jason if you're up on Taylor Swift and the Kelsey brothers. Um, we have a trivia every Tuesday and Thursday. Um, and that is without fail from seven to eight. And uh, that's always a good time. And another just quick, easy, fun experience that people can come out and enjoy and hang out with their friends and um, really enjoy an activity for them and their friends to do. So um, I guess that that is uh, really all for me. Um, so that's just some of the, the things that I wanted to share with you guys. We have an event coming up on March 2nd that uh, definitely embodies all of these 
different events that we're working on called Art After Dark, which will definitely be an experience. So stay tuned for that. And I'll let you know how many uh, Gen Zers come out for it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Caitlin. And just so you all know, um, these are where our references came from, and those will be included in the description of this video. Um, but at this point in time, we will take any questions that anyone has. So whether you want to put those in the chat or you want to unmute yourself to ask them, um, we are here to answer any questions. All right. Well, I guess we covered it all, but um, if you do have questions or want to reach out to us um, directly, you're welcome to do that. You can visit newtownmakin.com. All of our staff emails are there um, if you want to reach out um, and be sure to follow along um, with Newtown, both on Facebook and Instagram and visit our website. That's where we post all of the information about any training opportunities that we have for small businesses, any resources that we provide. Um, you will see the work of one of my favorite Gen Zers, um, Haley Popel, uh, across all of our social media platforms. Um, so you can see how she is telling our story and doing that. Um, and it's a great example to follow. So thank you all for joining us today and we'll see you next time.